I mean, if you think about the illusion of three-dimensional reality and, and this hologram that we're, we're fooled into our senses, into this concept of separation. There's me here and there's you there. And there's distance and space and there's objects and there's things and this three-dimensional reality causes us to go from one point of awareness, I'm here, to another point of awareness, uh, say the, the front door. And we have to move through space and we move through space, it takes time, right? So anything that we want in our lives takes time and energy. You gotta go to work and you gotta, you know, you gotta do all the things and then you gotta save money and then you go buy the thing and that's the rules of three-dimensional reality. The plane of demonstration means you gotta do something, right? So then there's me here and then my dreams are way, way out there and I estimate how long it's gonna take for me to arrive at those dreams because we're playing by the rules of three-dimensional reality and when we play by those rules, um, for the most part, I'm gonna wait for the experience to occur in order to have the experience produce an emotion. And the emotion is the chemical feedback as a result of the event. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. That's the game in, in three-dimensional world. If you're going to shorten the distance between cause and effect, uh, between the thought of something and the experience of something, you gotta go to a different set of rules and you have to create from the quantum field. Now, the quantum field is an invisible field of energy that exists beyond this space and time. Now, this takes a little bit of imagination because if we don't have any space between us, then we're connected. There's no separation uh, and, and there's no time. So now, when you go to the realm of a quantum, the rules change because in the quantum, things are connected. Energy connects things together. So then, if you are able to create from the field instead of from matter, and it's not matter that's emitting the field, it's the field that's actually creating matter. If we could change information in the field, we could change the hologram in three-dimensional reality. And it turns out you only need two things to do that. A super coherent brain, super organized coherent brain, and coherence is a rhythm or an order. So when the brain is coherent, it has a directive. It's an electrical charge. It's the signal we send out into the field. We're broadcasting information with our thoughts. Now, most people who have been conditioned and hypnotized into the rules of three-dimensional reality, they're waiting for the experience to happen, to feel the emotion of the experience, to take away their lack of separation, like whatever it's abundance, it's love, it's healing, whatever it is. But in the quantum model, you have to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion, and that takes hard coherence. So we've done extensive studies in training our community to begin to feel the emotion of the event before it happens. And people will say, well, I don't know how it would feel because I haven't experienced it. Well, the answer is really simple. If you felt gratitude or you felt appreciation or a love for life or a joy for existence, and you combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion, the heart produces a magnetic field. And that mag magnetic field expands out and it transcends the rules of space and time. When you feel whole, when you feel this elevated emotion, you feel connected, you feel bonded. And so when you feel the emotion of your future, you're connecting to the energy of the future and your body is so objective. It does not know the difference between the real life experience that's creating that emotion and the emotion that you're creating by thought alone. The body's actually believing, it's living in that future reality in the present moment. So if the thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the event back and you have brain and heart coherence, you got a really powerful Wi-Fi signal. And when you begin to do this properly, you no longer have to go anywhere to get anything. In other words, you're not living by the rules of, of cause and effect, you're living by the rules of causing an effect. You're producing an outcome. Now here's the cool part. If there's a vibrational match between your energy and you've really refined that signal and you can synchronize your energy, you start having synchronicities in your life and you start getting universal signs coming to you. You have opportunities, you have synchronicities, serendipities, coincidences, and you're not going anywhere to get it. They're coming to you. Now think about this. If you're connected to an invisible field of energy, that's the source of everything physical and material. If you were connected to source, why would you go anywhere? You wouldn't do that. You would say, come to me, right? So, so by doing this properly and causing an effect, when you see feedback in your life as the result of what you're doing, 
you're going to pay attention to what you did and you're going to do it again. Now, the cool part is, is that once you feel the excitement, the inspiration, the joy, the love for life, that's actually reinforcing the feeling that you've created with. And if you create again, you refine the signal a little bit more, you get more synchronicities, more opportunities. And the cool part about our community is that they're not saying, oh God, I have to go create my life. They're not saying that. They actually don't want to stop doing it because they don't want those, they don't want the magic to end. They don't want those cool quantum events that are occurring in their life to stop. So it's not like I have to, they're just, they're changing their energy. And when you change your energy, you change your life. And I've been at this long enough to tell you that nobody changes uh, until they change their energy. And, and, and so when you experiment with this as a, as a process and you learn a particular formula and we've been, we've been refining this and studying it so much in the last couple of years that the amount of coherence that we see in some of our student community is so incredibly organized and not only organized, but the amount of energy in the brain, the amount of energy in the heart is higher amplitude. So now bigger signal, bigger Wi-Fi signal, more connection. And so then you, if you can shorten the distance between cause and effect, between the thought of what you want and the experience of what you want, then you would start to master your life. And then you would start to see, wow, I could actually, if I, if I could do this, what could I do next? And, and I'm happy to say that uh, the people are doing it pretty well. I think that a lot of people who live in survival uh, and are living in stress, uh, when you're in survival, it's not a time to create. It's a time to run, fight, and hide. And so if you're aroused by fear, if you're aroused by anger or aggression, if you're aroused by pain, that arousal actually produces a lowering of energy, a lowering of frequency. You feel more like matter and less like energy, more like particle, less like wave. And if you're matter trying to change matter, you could, there's only a certain amount of things you can do. You can force it, you can control it, you can predict it, you can fight for it, you can compete for it, you can manipulate, you can suffer for it, you can do whatever you can to get what you want to make that feeling go away. And now here's the problem. The problem really stems from a person relying on their outer environment to change, to make that feeling go away. So the person who's dependent on the external circumstance makes sense that when things are going well in their life, they're really happy. But when things are not going well in their life, they're unhappy. So. If you're living by the stress hormones and you're, you're, you're preoccupied with your outer environment, and you're not paying attention at all to your inner world of thoughts and feelings, and the response to your environment is literally weakening the organism, every response, and then the thought of the problems, the thought of the challenges, the thought of the circumstances in the life also drains and depletes the body's very life force. And the stronger the emotion you have to some problem or some condition in your life, the more you pay attention to it. And where you place your attention is where you place your energy. Well, you're giving your life force away to that person or problem. Then it would be really hard to close your eyes and go within unless you are willing to understand. You'd have to lay down the very thing you used your whole life to get what you want for something greater to occur. And that's turning that battleship around. Because if I said to you, Kelly, why are you upset? Oh, I'm upset because of this person or the circumstance. What you're really saying is, this person or circumstance is actually controlling the way I feel and the way I think. And one thing that controls the way we feel or the way we think, we're victims to those circumstances. So that's the unconscious programs.